On March 3rd, 1876, in the sleepy town of Olympia Springs, meat began to fall from the sky. Mrs. Crouch was in her yard making soap when small little red flakes started softly falling down around her like snow. Soon larger chunks began to smash into the ground, as big as four inches wide. To Mrs. Crouch's horror, she soon realized that it wasn't some strange red snow falling from the heavens, but rather chunks of meat falling out of the sky all around her. It's safe to say that her day of soap making was ruined. The next day people came to investigate the strange happenings. Mr. Harrison Guild took the lead and came upon a scene of meat speckled in the ground in an area of 100 by 50 yards wide. Mostly small specks of meat, but a few larger chunks covered the ground with nearby fences dotted with red flesh. The day of the Kentucky meat shower saw a perfectly clear sky with no clouds in sight. Soon a small crowd gathered with two men stepping forward to help the investigation. Each one of them picking up a chunk of flesh and consuming it and telling the investigator that they believed it was either mutton or venison. The first explanation for the Kentucky meat shower came three months later when Leopold Bernardes examined some of the gunk and made the claims that the substance that came from the heavens was not actually meat, but rather a type of algae called nosto. Nosto often swelled in size, revealing itself after a rain, and back in the days people didn't quite understand it and believed it arrived simply by riding along in a breeze. His remarks were published in the Scientific American and said that this type of nospo had been flesh cutter and when consumed tasted a lot like frog or spring chicken legs. The only problem with his explanation that there was no rain. On the day in question the sky had been clear and sunny. Meat samples were given out and the next man to enter his claim was Dr. A. E. Edwards who believed that after examination that the meat was either horse meat or the flesh of an infant's lung. Huh, that second one's really specific and way more scary. Dr. J.W.S. Arnold would come along and agree with Dr. A. Mead Edwards' claims that the chunks of baby lung had fallen from the sky and scattered across the field. After more scientists came along and examined samples, it was revealed that the chunks of flesh belonged to several different categories of meat, some being lung, other muscular tissue, and two more samples were determined to be cartilage. Next man to throw his hat in the rings was Dr. L. D. Caspin with his examination of what he called the shower of quivering flesh. After taking several samples and lighting them on fire, he said the flesh smelled distinctly of rancid mutton. He somehow used this observation to relay into his conclusion, which is the most plausible answer and by far my favorite one. He believed while Mrs. Crouch was in her yard making soap, a flock of vultures were sailing overhead. For one reason or another, one of the vultures vomited, which caused a chain reaction of all the vultures seeing their brethren puke and getting sick themselves, literally raining down the contents of their stomach onto poor Mrs. Crouch's soap. Because of the meat was expelled from such heights and had been half digested, most of it floated down softly like Christmas morning snow, covering the ground in a crimson red. This seemed to be the most reasonable explanation for the events, and covered up many of the different issues like why there was a variety of tissue and how it fell from the sky on a clear Kentucky day. Thank you for taking a ride on the Express to the Void. Think about hitting that subscribe button to book a ticket on your next adventure. I hope you enjoyed this video, this was the first one that I narrated myself and if you had any thoughts or comments on it, please leave it in the comment section below and uh, until next time, please get off my train.